Hello, welcome to the Thursday, July 12, 2018 edition of the Sands Internet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Remco today took a closer look at these Hello Peppa scans that we saw about a week ago. He actually tuned his honeypot to return the correct answer to these strings. So what he saw was the second stage that's then being executed once this initial indicator turns out to work. Well, that second stage was then a remote code execution shell. Now, the interesting part about this script is that they don't use an existing script, but instead they rolled their own. They do authentication here. They do require a password parameter. Now, in the script itself, they only have a hash. They do a an MD5 of the password, then a SHA of that, but they only compare the last four digits of the resulting hash, which uh, of course makes it pretty easy to come up with a password that works. They are looking for vulnerabilities in a wide range of scripts, but uh, among those URLs they're testing, they're very heavy on PHP, MySQL, and various variations of URLs that you would typically use for PHP, MySQL. And then we have now more details about the Spectre 1.1 and 1.2 vulnerabilities. Now the existence of these vulnerabilities has been announced a while ago, but uh, no real details were announced until now. One sort of surprise here was that this is not just allowing attackers to read data, but it's also going to allow attackers to write data across trust boundaries in the process. And it looks like Intel is accepting this new reality where we have continuous releases of these hardware flaws. So Intel is now going to adopt a quarterly patch cycle for its microcode. In addition to these quarterly updates, you may also still see some intermediate updates for very critical flaws that may be discovered between updates. So this is pretty much what you have, for example, from Oracle, which publishes its uh, critical patch updates once a quarter, but occasionally does release additional patches in between. And it looks like internet transit providers are becoming more vigilant when it comes to BGP hijacking. Now, we had a number of high profile BGP hijacking events uh, over the years. Problem is uh, there is sort of a trust relationship between ISPs and ISPs that peer with each other, that connect to each other, tend to trust each other's BGP announcements. This is not particular critical for uh, these internet transit providers. Internet transit providers essentially connect different ISPs to each other, sometimes also called network service providers instead of internet service providers. Now, one particular ISP, BitConnell, has made a name for itself by being the source of the vast majority of these BGP hijacks. In the past, they were able to essentially move from in a transit provider to in a transit provider. They changed their name a couple times in order to make it more difficult to actually track who they are. But it looks like we are at a point now where in a transit providers will no longer provide access to BitConnell. We'll have to see how this works out if they're able to sort of you know, slip on a different cloak in order to still get access. But at this point, it looks like they have been taken offline. And starting with Chrome 67, which was released at the end of May, Google made site isolation the default setting in most versions of Google Chrome. Before that, starting in December with Chrome 63, the feature was available, but it was turned off by default. The reason site isolation helps with security is that each site, each origin runs in its own process in Chrome. So Chrome now uses multiple processes and with that better isolating 
content from different sites. This is supposed to in particular help with bugs like Spectre, where for example, JavaScript could be used to read data from other sites. Now, the reason this wasn't enabled uh, to start with is that this does incur quite a performance hit, also takes about 10 to 15% more memory than running everything in one process. However, given that Google had to implement a number of other mitigations for these CPU flaws that also caused a performance hit, Google is now able to actually remove some of these other mitigations. So hopefully this will end up with a more generic and more robust security feature instead of having this patchwork of patches. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.